What's going on, everyone? This is Uchang Joku, and welcome to the Sneaker Principal Podcast. In this episode, I will be concluding my uh, story, my journey, my retelling of how I went from being a high school principal. I'm sorry, backwards. How I went from being a teacher to a principal. So the whole path has been talking about becoming a teacher, a dean at the same time, then the journey towards becoming an assistant principal, then the three times that I almost became principal, and finally now, how I did become a principal. And uh, a principal spanning two schools, a middle school and a high school, in the Bronx and in Brooklyn. And um, with that being said, let's go ahead and start the show. When they see me, they know that every day when I'm breathing, it's, it's, it's for us to go farther, you know? Every time I speak, I want the truth to come out. You know what I'm saying? Every time I speak, I want to shiver. You know, I don't want them to be like, they know what I'm going to say because it's polite. They know what I'm going to say. And even if I get in trouble, you know what I'm saying? That ain't that what we're supposed to do. It's, I'm not saying I'm going to rule the world or I'm going to change the world, but I guarantee that I will spark the, the, the brain that will change the world. And that's our job, is to spark somebody else watching us. We, we might not be the ones, but let's not be selfish, and because we're not going to change the world, let's not talk about how we should change it. I don't know how to change it, but I know if I keep talking about how dirty it is out here, somebody's going to clean it up. And now, he's been promoted. His job, principal. What's going on, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome to this episode again. Um... Please bear with me if there's anything weird happening in, in any of the images that you see on the screen. I spent some time yesterday after yesterday's episode, as I think I told you guys, that episode was actually streamed live, and this episode is actually being pre-recorded. But I'm still using the same um, um, production system, you know, Ecamm Live with all my skins and layers and everything else. And uh, yesterday I noticed that things were off. My name was off of the the white banner and all kinds of things, but I fixed it. I, f I fixed it. You know, it's what happens when you're playing with um with um, applications in the beta form and things like that. And when you're reloading things, things kind of get weird. But it's been taken care of, I believe. Um, let me try this real quick. Here we go. Please do not forget to subscribe and um, hit the notification bell so that whenever I create more content, you have access to it. Um, those of you listening on, listening on um on uh, podcast to Apple Podcasts to Google Podcasts, whatever podcast stream, the video stuff doesn't, doesn't really mean anything to you because you're listening and not watching. But this is specific for those of you who are, who are watching on YouTube, on LinkedIn, and on um, Twitter as well. So um, I'm going to try and I hope that this will happen, this whole entire episode is going to happen before my kids wake up. They're right next door having nap time right now. And... Um, the wife uh, stepped out to uh, go um, run some errands. So I have one ear kind of listening for the kids to make sure that, um, that they're fine. But they're knocked out. You know, it's, it's a hot day today, and they're well hydrated, and they're in bed for a much-needed nap. All right, let's go ahead and one more time uh, start this episode talking about how I became a principal. So in the last episode, I concluded with the fact that I'm... Uh, the last time that the opportunity was presented to me and didn't happen, uh, I found out the last day of school um, of that particular year by the superintendent walking in with the deputy superintendent with um, the new principal and assistant principal after I'd done a lot of work to kind of get the school back to where it needed to be. And honestly, it was upsetting, but then in my mind, I was like, I know what I did. I know what my mission was. Even though the reward that I thought was going to be rewarded to me didn't happen, I was still proud of myself because, A, walking into a space like that um, um, and being able to do what would need to be done in that short time span um, gave um, uh, a certain level of confidence to me because I thought about the people who had had faith in me from the first school, becoming a dean, then the principal who took me in as his dean, then took me along with him to be... To be um, to be a dean at, at a turnaround school and where I, then I went from being a con ally to being a graduate student at Columbia University. I got my master's degree in education leadership to be a principal and I became an assistant principal. All those things was culminated in this three month span between the month of April and June in a school that was extremely chaotic. 
So um, here I am, the last day of school, you know, in front of the whole entire staff, finding out that it wasn't going to be me, it was going to be someone else and a team. And I was fine with that, you know. I was upset, but I had no other choice but to be like, okay, fine. It's not my time yet. So um, I think all was said and done. I went on vacation. I was like, in summertime, I was a 10-month AP. I decided I was going to, I was going to work summer school or do anything like that. I was going to just enjoy my vacation. And so what I did, I, I chilled out. Um, I don't remember what I did that summer. Maybe I was seething the whole entire summer. <laughs> no, I wasn't seething. Um, I was upset, but I was chill. And, um, but the whole time I was waiting because I was told that there was another opportunity for me that was being set up for me that um, um, and I would not be returning to that particular school, middle school, because honestly, I set up myself as a high school guy. So, um, and the summer went, went along, and I remember getting a phone call from the new principal at that middle school and he asked me, so um, what's happening with you? Are you going to be, are you leaving? Are you coming back? What's going on? Because you're on my, you're on my, um, on my budget. I remember saying to him, like, <laughs> and me being flippant. And then mind you, because I'm thinking to myself, like, dude, why are you calling me? You should, you should be calling the superintendent. You know? and, he, and he was very brass about, brash about this whole, his, his delivery. I said to him, listen, um, you need to talk to the superintendent, not me. Because... You know, I'm, if I'm still on your, on your budget, it's because that's where I've been left, not because I want to be on your budget. And um, I think it was probably the divorce way to start a relationship, if there was going to be a relationship. But it was the truth, right? And, um, and eventually, I did have a conversation with the superintendent and deputy superintendent. And the conversation went this way. Listen, you, you come with, a, lot of wealth, you come with a, a wealth of experience. Where have I heard that before? And um, this, you know, and I, we think that this team will, could really benefit from you being there, the new principal and the new eight people. Mind you, they were both brand new. First year principal, had never been an assistant principal before, had never been a dean before, had never been an administrator. Free from the classroom to a principalship. Then, the, um, then the, the AP had been a teacher leader, but this is their first time as an AP. So these were two rookies in the game. And mind you, this time, I think I already had seven years or so as, a, as an assistant principal and um, middle school, high school and, um, and uh, elementary school. So I had a breadth of experience. So I was utilizing that capacity, the same as my previous school to support the new team. So I, so I, did, I did my job, you know, but again, this was not a request that I made for myself. This was a request that was made of me of my superintendent and the deputy superintendent. So I went ahead and acted accordingly. So to make a long story short, the principal um, <laughs> was not feeling me at all, and I wouldn't feel be feeling me either. You know, I'm I'm I am I'm the new principal. This is my school, and I'm not being given a chance to lead my school. Instead, I feel like I have this guy who is here on the behest of the superintendent. What is he here to spy on me? Is he here to you know what to manage me because he's he has more experience as as an administrator. So it just didn't work out very well. And I did my best. I swear to God, I did my best to support and, and um, give counsel. And I was met with, you know, pretty much shut up, stay in your lane. I know what I'm doing. And there were quite a few things that happened that, um, <sighs> maybe down the road, I might tell those stories. But I have to tell the stories in a way where it doesn't impact the, you know, the people who are involved in these stories. But situations where with families and with students, they were just insane. The kids was very disrespectful towards this principal. Parents would come to the building trying to find, find this principal and try to like, you know, fight the principal. And every single time, Mr. Njoku would be called to, to secure the, the, the situation, whether it was checking the students and making sure I got them back to center and back to work, or, um, or um, you know, taking a parent out of the situation and calming them down and resolving the problem. So I, that was my that was my role. I was a fix fix it guy. And as you can imagine, after a while, it got kind of like annoying. Because I'm like, so I'm here to just be the one to you know, if, if, if things go off, off the rails, to be the one to fix it. But then I, you know, I start asking that question to yourself. Like I start asking the question to myself. So what is he getting paid for? <laughs> you know, if I'm going to be doing his job, what am I doing? You know, what's going on? But you know what? I told myself I was going to stay in my lane and if and if anything at the end of the year I'll look for another position you know I was uh, you know I had the, f the freedom to move on to wherever I wanted to be I didn't have to be there so um, as the year wound on 
things got more and more out of control. And um, I was um, approached by the superintendent quite a few times, like, what was going on in the building? And I was, being, I was very honest. I was like, listen, you know, um, it's, it's a tough job, and, and it takes time to acclimate, especially for a brand-new administrator, to how things are done. You know, you can have all the great ideas in your head. You have to have these, all these visions. But if it's not tried and tested, truly tried and tested, you don't know if what you're thinking is going to work. And, um, and that's why it's very important to have coaches and have people that, 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 um, that, that can counsel you and guide you. And I've, ma- I've made great use of that in my career. And um, at the end of the year, you know, there's a lot of things that happened. Um, nothing that I did or that I started, but a lot of things that happened with this principal that the superintendent decided that um, it was not working. And then um, they were, in, and he was removed. He was removed, this principal. And, um, and I'll be honest, uh, at that point in time, I'm still there in the building. I was not the one who was approached first for the principalship. As a matter of fact, the assistant principal was approached first. And it was asked if they were interested in taking on, taking on the role as a principal. Mind you, again, this is a person who, this would have been their first year as an administrator. And, um, and I've, I have to give them kudos because they, um, they, uh, were, they were very adamant about it wasn't their time yet. And they, did, they needed more, more time and experience. And they were the ones who said to the, to the superintendent, why not Mr. Njoku, you know? Like he knows what he's doing. He's been, he's been, he's been here. He's been, and he has, you know, the resume. And it was at that point in time that I was did approach and asked like, listen. And it was funny because the approach was not, you know, it was like, and I was told by the, by the assistant principal um, what had happened. And I, I, I always respect them for this, and I, and I always love them for this because, again, sometimes you might think things should happen the way it's supposed to happen, but you don't, you can never control that. And in them saying that to the superintendent and the superintendent, you know, maybe had no other choice but to approach me. Um, but then did they approach me and say, hey, you know, we see what you've been doing, blah, 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 and um, want to know if you're ready to be principal. In my mind, I'm thinking, really? Bruh, really? Ready to be principal? <laughs> so, of course, I was like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm like, you know, I've, I've, I've always been ready. I've always, I've been properly trained. I've been doing this for, for a while. And you brought me here to fix a problem. I fixed it. So I think I am very ready. And that's how I was offered a princi- my first principalship. So it took not the fourth time to um, actually be offered. And even, even, but the funny thing is, even still, after the offering of being principal, we should have just meant, okay, summertime is what you need to do, blah, blah, blah. No. I was put through hurdles. I was told the only way that they were going to go through with me being the principal, I had to attend as uh, I had to be part of a, a cohort program at the Leadership Academy, um, which is an uh, institution that at one point in time serviced only um, aspiring um, leaders in New York City, but now works across the country. I had to be part of their that cohort that that summer, which is 2016. And mind you, I had I had already I had other plans. I had canceled all my plans to be in this uh, summer long program that actually started in the summer but ran through the whole entire year. Um, and I sat there and I was like, okay, why am I being made to go through this program? But the th- funny thing about it is the whole entire curriculum, the, everything that was done there mirrored the program that I did at Columbia. And I'm sitting there with, 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 um, with aspiring leaders who were all great people, but I have to, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I was not feeling it. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, not only was I promised something that I was not promised. I was, it was suggested I was going to be principal. Then it didn't happen. Then when it was seen that the person they had picked was not qualified to do the work, you know, I was still not the first one approached. It was someone else approached before me. And then, then when I was finally approached and I said, yes, well, only after you do this. So I went through all that. And, um, and, uh, after, after, after it was said and done, I did have an amazing year as principal and then I had two additional years there as principal. And, um, and in future videos, I'll talk to you about the things that I did as a principal and things that I learned from my first principalship. And then at the end of the three years, um, I was uh, approached to, I was approached about my interest in becoming a high school principal. And then I, and that was, so my first school as principal was in the Bronx in District 3. 
and um, and that summer I was approached. The, the, the summer of 2019, I was approached whether I would be interested in being a high school principal in Brooklyn, which um, honestly was a tough decision because I loved the middle school I was at, but in my heart I knew I wanted to be a high school principal, and I I said yes, and that's how I ended up where I'm at right now as a high school principal in Brooklyn North, and uh, again it was it was quite a journey. You know, so uh, in the past three episodes, I've pretty much given you, laid out to you the path that took me to get to where, where I'm at right now, even though there's a lot more detail in there. And, and in future videos, in, fe- in fe- future podcast episodes, I will share that journey. But um, there's a lesson I want you to take again through all of this. So let me go ahead and start up that, you know, closing music. And one more time, if you're on YouTube, subscribe hit the notification bell so that in the future when I create um, new episodes and podcasts and video podcasts, you have access to it as well. So um, let's go ahead and uh, start this uh, closing here. So, uh, so the thing I want you to remember here is this. Let me turn this music down a little bit. The path towards what you want in this life is not going to be a straight one ever. It's never going to be straight. It's going to be one of hills and valleys, you know, twists and turns. And that's what it was like for me in education and and my aspiration to become a school leader. So, um, again, those of you who are hearing this, you know, you know, I don't care if it's one person, two people, or no people, but I I believe eventually someone's going to stumble upon this podcast episode and it's going to get something out of it. Do not let the no's dissuade you. Do not let the promises of something that then it doesn't come through make you feel like, oh my God, they're trying to play me and I hate the system. Because you have to understand that human beings are the ones behind all these decisions. And people will have in their minds the vision of what they think the ideal is. You know, whether it was being told that, hey, because you don't speak Spanish, you shouldn't be a principal at this particular school. Whether it's, um, well, you didn't go to this particular program, you're not as polished as this person, you shouldn't be in this role. You know, you shouldn't be the dean because, hey, you don't have enough teaching experience, and most deans have seven years teaching experience. You know, one thing I can say about my journey is that I have proved that tenacity and passion and love for what you do will open doors for you. You know, even though I didn't really emphasize this as much, the one defining factor for me throughout this whole entire journey of mine has been how much I love working in schools, how much I love my students, how lo- much I love being part of their lives, and not only that, impacting teachers and helping them be the best at what they do as well. So um, with that being said, thank you so much for hearing my whole entire story. All right, y'all. Be well. And now, he's been promoted. His job, principal. Let's see it.